Okay, welcome back. It's Friday, third Friday. So we looked at um, the element of fire and its lovely assistant smoke, right? And then later on we looked at the magic of air pulling something from nothing. And so this week we're looking at the magic, like earth magic. And that's really kind of like what the substance of life is. And for that, I'm turning to my favorite um, magical team, Penn and Teller. I cannot, cannot wait until I feel safe to go back to Vegas and go see Penn and Teller again because, oh my gosh. Um, forgive me, but most of the quotes that I have on the board today are pulled from their master class, you know, but I think it's so amazing how the lessons that a magician has to teach are, I think, the exact same lessons that a good poetry teacher would teach, you know? So, the first thing is a misquote. So, I was just kind of like listening along and taking notes. And the, the first thing I wrote down is, how do we know what is real? But that's not what Penn and Teller said. Um, Penn and Teller said, magic is recognizing how we know what is true right so what is real and what is true is very very different and the thing that distinguishes the two is emotion right so what is real well i mean that's like it requires empirical evidence and like usually we don't like it <laughs> but what is true is infused with this like sort of illogical emotion like this like the thing that makes it all worthwhile which might not even be real but it could be true. And that's all about storytelling. Ooh, I love that. So Penn and Teller, here's a couple of notes that come from Penn and Teller. Um, if you are smart enough to work silently, it brings out a huge amount of wonder, right? So sometimes the best part of a magic trick is not when the magician is talking to you, but in that silent, sort of like anticipation of what happens next and all the audience has to go off of is like small gestures, a walk across the stage, a deep breath, a prop, right? But the magician is not telling you what they're doing. You actually have to watch the scene and when you don't talk, the audience has to tell itself the story and they don't know where it's going right? So in the time between one action and another, they're filling it in with narrative. And that's so exciting because that's exactly what a poem does. And so I know that this is a repeat from every, like, every poetry um, set of lessons that I have for you. But I do think that at least once every month, we should be mindful of our white space, right? Be mindful of our silences. And I love metonymy because metonymy is like kind of its own sort of silence. It doesn't say the whole thing. It only gives you a piece of it and a whole lot of space in between to figure out how it fits together. And like there are a lot of cliches that are like acts of metonymy, right? So I think like crowned for a king, that to me is a bit cliche. But what I want you to think about poetry is we, we didn't invent the labels and then write about them. We as human beings wrote and then labeled how it worked, right? So that means we have complete permission, in fact should, be inventing new acts of metonymy, right? It's, it's okay to repeat a famous magician's greatest trick. It's a whole nother level to invent your own trick, right? And so that's kind of the two focuses for this um, poetry prompt is I want you to be mindful of your silences. So build in blank space, build in white space, let there be spaces between your stanzas, between your words, you know, and let that white space, that silence, give your reader enough room to write in their own stories between the story that you are orchestrating. That's so much fun, right? If, it, if When you're reading a poem and it's working and you can actually um, 
build the story with the storyteller. Oh, it's so great. I mean, that's why we love magic, right? That, that's why we go to magic shows. That's why we love magicians, because they're so good at this. Okay, and then of course the, the second thing with that is invent your own metonymy. So don't lean in so much to those like already established cliche forms of metonymy, but in, invent your own. And that, well, one couple more notes from Penn and Teller because they're just so good. So magic is sound misdirection, right? Magic is sound misdirection. So the way that this would work is the audience thinks you're talking about one subject, but you're really talking about the other. And so a lot of people have said that the only two subjects there are to write about are basically life slash sex and death, right? Well, how great to be talking about death, but actually have it be about life. Or, you know what I mean? I mean, there's definitely some poems out there where like people are talking about sex, but it's actually really about death, you know what I mean? And so, just kind of misleading or misdirecting the audience. If you can pull that off, that's pretty great. So a couple, couple more notes from Penn and Teller. Um, storytelling is essential. Um, really play upon people's assumptions. So you know that people are gonna assume something. So lead them to that assumption and then surprise them with something they never saw coming, right? So that means tell half of a cliche and then break the cliche and do something completely new. Um, another thing that magicians have to be mindful of is the way we perceive the world. Um, and then you must be empathetic. So you must try to see yourself through another person's eyes. And I think that that's like deep, deep empathy. Because you're not just putting yourself in someone else's shoes. You're putting someone else, you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes and letting them assess who you are. That's dangerous and scary, but really fun to do as well. And will make you a great magician and poet. And then finally, say one of the things that makes life worth living is giving other people joy. And so I think every magic trick that was ever invented was invented to bring a person joy. Do the same thing with your poetry. I'm not saying the poem has to be a happy poem, but it should delight people with how it makes them see the same old world in a completely new way. All right, that's it. Three done. Are they all seven minutes? <laughs>